Hi, this is Mark from ITCU Solutions, and today I just want to go over how to set up an IKE version 2 IPsec tunnel between a Cisco router and a Cisco ASA. I've had a couple of clients that had trouble with this, um, so I just want to go over quickly how to do this. As you can see in our diagram up here, we just have a Cisco router who has a peer that's a Cisco ASA that's at 1.1.1.2, and the router's outside interface is 1.1.1.3. And if you look over here, this is our router, which has that outside interface of so 1.1.1.3. It has a default route just over to the ASA. Uh, the inverse is true down here. We have the outside interface on the ASA is 1.1.1.2, and we have the dot default route to the router on 1.1.1.3. So what I thought we would do here is we're just going to enter in the crypto commands, and I have them set up in an order that will work to enter them. And also the idea here is to show you that the key ring, the commands on this side are basically equivalent to the commands you'll see on the other side. So these are, the key ring on the router, for example, is basically the same as the tunnel group on the ASA. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add this key ring. I'm just going to cut and paste here to speed this up. And so what we're doing when we're adding the key ring is the key ring is associating with however many peers you want to associate. So you could add multiple peers on here, but in this case, the only peer I have is the ASA. So it sets the peer address and then it tells it what uh, type of uh, pre-shared key that you're going to use. In this case, since I'm setting up both the local and remote, technically these are asymmetric keys, even though I'm using the same. Uh, so basically they're symmetric because I'm using Cisco for both of them. But you could set up just a symmetric key where you didn't have to identify the word local or remote. I think this is the more common way to do it. So this is the way we're going to do it. And we're also going to do this on the ASA side. So effectively all I've done is I've set up the peer on the key ring with the pre-shared key, key local and remote of Cisco Cisco. So we'll do the same thing on the ASA side with the tunnel group. Okay, and so I did exactly the same thing. The peer is 1.1.1.3, which is the router, and we just set up the pre-shared key for both local and remote as Cisco. So let's move on here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to set up our IKE version 2 policies. And on the, uh, I think this is actually the part of this that creates a lot of confusion between the router and the ASA. So in this policy, as you see, I have the pseudo random function command here of SHA in red. The reason I have that here is you can't actually enter that on a router. Um, if I tried to enter that, as I'll show you, okay, I enter those. Now, if I try to enter the pseudo random function generator, the command doesn't exist. And the reason it doesn't exist is when you enter this on, when you enter your integrity on the router, it uses the same setting for integrity as it does for your pseudo random function generator. So if I set SHA1 here and SHA here, this has to be SHA1 on this side. Um, I'm also not entering the lifetime because this is the default. I'm just showing it here. It's by default. You can enter it if you want. Um, it won't show up because it's the default. And so, but I need all of these settings on my proposal to match the ASA. And on the ASA, <coughs> I have to enter these. They're not default, including my pseudo random function. So I can't set the integrity and the pseudo random function differently if I'm connecting to a router. It's not allowed. I could do it if I was connecting to another ASA. I could have set this to like SHA-256 with my integrity of, of SHA. You can do that, but you can't do that with the router. They have to be the same. So if I set the integrity here of SHA-256, I have to come down with the pseudo random function as well and set it as SHA-256 in order to match them because they're going to be the same on the router. So let's add those as well to the, uh, see, did I already do it? Let's add those as well to the ASA. Okay. So now those are identical. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the profile on the router. There isn't an equivalent to this on the ASA side because the point of the profile is to add 
all these the keys the key ring and everything together so I can put it on one line uh, in my crypto map you don't have to do that on the ASA side because you enter all three the address the peer and everything you can just enter it all on one line because you don't have all this extra stuff so we'll add that over here okay so we get the profile in there And again, Cisco had to do this because it gives you the uh, flexibility with the key ring um, in order to have different keys with multiple peers out there. You could set a bunch of peers here with different pre-shaped keys or certificates or whatever you're doing. Now the next step also on the router is unique only to the router. And that is you have to set up a policy. And the reason Cisco has you do this is that um, when you your policy you can use match statements so it allows routers can have VRFs this policy you could create match statements for example to different VRFs to make it actually VRF aware so you, so you could apply different crypto policies to different VRFs on your routers you can also do it you can also match I believe by IP addresses I've only done it for VRFs uh, with our ASA, we can't really do that. It's not VRF aware. It's only a 5505. I'm not even sure if you had a much more expensive ASA, if you could do that with context. I've never tried it. But that's why you have to do it with the router. It's, it's largely because routers nowadays are all VRF aware. Okay, so. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the IPsec proposal. And if you're familiar with, you know, just the Internet Key Exchange version one, it's always been a transform set because it's IPsec. It's not, it's not affected by that. So you're going to use the same thing because this is IPsec and not uh, part of the. It's not part of IKE v1 or v2. So this doesn't change for your routers. So I'm just add this proposal to my router. Okay. And you can see I'm just using a AS256 and again SHA-1. And so the equivalent on that on the uh, ASA side is this crypto IPsec, IPsec proposal. And again, you can see it's AS256 and SHA-1 for the integrity. Spelled out even better for you on the ASA. So let's get that entered. And then the next thing, in order to match your interesting traffic, we have to put it in an access control list on the router. In this case, I'm just going to do any, any. I'm not planning on doing any split tunneling. Uh, so I think most time, if you're just connecting to another site and you're not doing split tunnel, this is probably one of the most common ways to do it. So we'll add that next. And we'll do the same thing on the ASA real quickly. Also get our access control list for matching interesting traffic. Okay, so that's all identical so far. And we basically have all of our parameters now in place. We just have to apply, the, add them into our crypto map. So we have to have our, our peer, our IPsec proposal, and our, <coughs> excuse me, IKE v version two proposals. Okay, so let's add it to our crypto map on the router. and our match for interesting traffic. Okay. So as you can see, we have our transform set now, our IKEA version two proposal, our interesting traffic and who our peer is. And we'll do the same thing for the ASA. Okay. So we got everything going on there. Also proposal, we got our IKE version two and our uh, P1 proposal, so our IKE V2 up there, and also our interesting traffic and our peer. So the last thing we just have to do is apply these to this particular interface we're using on the router. Our outside interface is VLAN two. 
So we'll do that up here. We'll apply it to VLAN 2. Okay, so we just applied it right here to this interface. Oh, apparently I have one on here. Oh, I'm sorry. Apparently I have the wrong name on it. So let's see, what should it be? It should be, I just use for my crypto. Oh, it's 2ASA, not from sign. We'll get that fixed real quick. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing on the ASI, ASA side. I'm not only, I'm applying it here to the outside interface and I have to turn on IP version two on the ASA. Okay. The, the ASA also gives you the option. You could run IK version 1 as well and use it for the backup tunnel in case IK version 2 had a problem. I don't generally do that. We've never had a problem uh, that was non-connection related. So I think that's a fairly low probability, but that's something you might want to do if you're worried about it. So now that all this is in place, I'm just going to uh, try to ping my inside interface across to the router. Uh, let's see, which is 31.5.65. Okay, so mm, this is taking a little bit. Hopefully. Okay. So I did something wrong. Uh, maybe I cut and paste something wrong. So I'm just going to debug just real quickly here. Hopefully I can figure this out real quick. So, and it's. I like it on the ASA better. I think it gives you better output for debug instead of the router. You can do it up here as well. Uh, but I'm going to take a quick look here and turn it on on the, uh, oops, on the ASA. And I forgot what the, oh yeah, that's right. We'll do both platform and protocol. And also just in case maybe See if the first part came up here. Okay, so it's probably something with uh, the first parameter on our IK version two crypto map here, but we'll uh, give it a try here. Oh, oh, I see what the problem is. <laughs> okay, so let's do an undebug all. Okay, um, sorry, this isn't, this is the wrong peer address. So let's fix that real quick. See where, where's it at though? Where's the problem at? Oh, okay, it's in the crypto map itself. So let's get rid of this guy. And you can't just add the IP in there. Uh, if you if you if you do crypto map to router ISAP here and I don't delete it first, it will just add it. So you want to delete it first, or it's still not going to fix it. So and what are we? We're going to one 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 three three. Okay. Let's, let's see if. Okay. Let's give it a try again, and hopefully this fixes it. <laughs> Okay, good. So um, you can see our tunnel came up. E version two, look at ESA, and the IPsec tunnel should be there as well. Okay, and you can see that it's encapsulating and decrypting, basically encrypting and decrypting the uh, packets on both sides, and if we do the same thing on the router, we should see it up here too. So you can see it's up. And this is what I was talking about. See, this is for VRFs. Um, if you were to use that uh, policy, um, you could make it VRF aware if you wanted. Obviously, we're not doing that. So I think everything's good here. I hope this is helpful. Uh, to anyone that's been having problems with this. And uh, let me know if you have any questions below. I will try to answer them. Thank you.